So here we are, second installment of my mini Diablo game. In this episode, I'm going to add in a mini map. I'm going to do randomly generated dungeons, add in a spell system and start making plans for modding framework. So let's have a look. So let's take a look at the minimap in action. Up in the top right of the screen there, you can see the minimap is growing as I move around and we have a fog of war effect going on. Okay, how do we make that? Well, it's easy enough. With Dungeon Architect, you get this component here, the grid flow minimap. And you drop that onto your grid flow dungeon and create a render texture, which is what you're seeing here. So how do you clear the fog of war? Well, that's also easy to do. You have a component that you want to add onto your player character. So we're going to select the player. And on this character, we have this grid flow minimap tracked object. You put an icon on here that will appear in the minimap. And then you tick explores fog of war. All this is documented in Dungeon Architect in quite some detail. Next up, we want to add health packs. So there the character just picked one up. How are we going to make those? Well, here we have my development scene, and I use this tool called Debugging Essentials, which enables me to write commands for testing. So I have this command that when I run it, it damages the player and spawns a health pack. That enables me to very quickly test what I'm doing. So how did I create that health pack? Well, it's really pretty easy. You have this stim pack component, which comes as part of the top-down engine, and I've added a trigger sphere collider to it. And then within there, I have a feedback, which is going to play when the character touches it. And I have a model, which in this case is the med pack from 3D Forge's assets. And here's my testing code that uses debug essentials to provide that console input I showed you at the beginning there. This is really good for rapid iteration when you're working with new code. I recommend you take a look at it. It's really well documented, and this will become obvious if you read the docs. So once you've got your stim pack working, you need to be able to spawn it into the dungeon. And that brings us back to Dungeon Architect. Here we have our grid flow. We have an element that is going to spawn our health pack in according to a particular set of probabilities. And then using the marker that we set up there, we just add that into our theme. And that spawns in the object we were looking at a moment ago, which has the stim pack and the collider on it. Once that's all set up, it'll be spawned into your dungeon and you can heal the player just like we saw before. So in the last video, we created a zombie to get started, but we obviously need a lot more. And here is my development scene for my zombies. And this is the process I've developed for creating new zombies. So what I've done is I've duplicated an existing zombie. And then I'm going to go and find a new model that I want to use. I rename the duplicate. And then I'm going to remove the original model and drag in my new model. Now that we have changed the model, we need to make sure that the top-down engine character controller is aware of the new model and the animator. That's easy to do, just open up the character controller and drop in the animator and model into the appropriate fields. Now, of course, we're also going to need an animator for this model. What we do is we create an animator override from our base zombie controller and then add in all of the animations that we're going to use for this model. Now, I don't want to go into detail about how I built this controller. Uh, it's a pretty detailed topic in itself. I covered some of the basics in the first video in this series, and the documentation for Top Down Engine is pretty good. And there's loads of content out there about how to do animations. That said, if you do have problems, do leave a comment and we'll see what we can do for you. Next up, we need to add in the weapon attachment onto the model's hand. So we're just going to drill down in the hierarchy of the model, add a game object, rename it to weapon attachment, and then drag it into the weapon attachment of the character handle weapon on the main character, just like we did in the first episode of this series. And then finally, we need to give this fella his weapon. So this guy uses a torch. I'm not going to go through how that's set up. Have a look at the first video in this series to see how that's done. Now we can take a look at it in my dev scene. And because we copied one of my existing characters, the AI and the damage and all that has come with it. And we can see that that is all working nicely. Next up, let's get it in the main game. So all we need to do for that is create a prefab of our new zombie, open up our theme for our dungeon, 
add in the new zombie, adjust the spawn probability of each of the zombies, and we're done. That's it. So now that we have our zombies massing and attacking the player, we need to think a little bit about how does the player stay alive. Well here we're taking quite a lot of damage, but once we've killed off the zombies, we can do something special to deal with that. We can cast a heal spell. And that's not all, I've built a complete spell system, so here's another example. The zombie comes in to attack, cast a lava spell, all the zombies in the area get damaged, and now it's just one hit and they're done. So let's take a look at what this looks like for the designer. Over here in the editor we have our player and we've created a brand new character cast spell ability. This is just an extension of the ability system in Top Down Engine. For the most part these parameters are provided by the Top Down Engine. But this section here is the spell section and this is where we define what we can do. We have two spells, the heal and the attack spell, and then we have a mana and a mana regeneration rate as well. And that allows us to define the spells that we're able to cast and also at the moment defines which key is used to cast those spells. So let's take a look at how the spells are defined. They're scriptable objects, pretty simple in nature. They have a mana cost, a duration, and the feedback, which is provided by the uh, top-down engine's feedback system to give visual and audio feedback when it's cast. And then in this case, we have the spell-specific points to heal. The next one we'll look at is attack, has the same first three parameters, and then it has a damage section. This is the radius of effect, the maximum number of objects to be affected, initial damage, and then the damage per second. And finally, the layer mask, which objects can be affected by this spell. So that's really simple. Now it's really easy to create new spells. I'm not gonna go through the code here, but it's really simple to do. So what I want to do is create a moddable environment that will allow anybody to add new spells and new effects and so on into the game. That'll make it easy for me to add in new spells, but if anybody wants to help, they'd be able to do so. That would be pretty cool. Okay, what else would be pretty cool? It'd be to generate the dungeons at runtime so that we don't know what dungeon we're going to be entering when we play. Up until now, we've been generating it at design time. But what I want to do is exactly what I'm going to do here. Hit play and you get a randomly generated dungeon. If I stop this and go and hit play again, you'll see I have a completely different dungeon. There you go. So how do we do that? Well, most of the work is done by Dungeon Architect. But I do need to create this little script here, Dungeon Manager. That has a reference to the top-down engine level manager. And then I also have a reference to the dungeon grid flow, which is what's generating the actual dungeon. Finally, I have a single Boolean here, which is going to tell me whether I'm going to randomize the dungeon on startup or whether I want to use a standardized dungeon for testing during development. Now, the Dungeon Architect documentation clearly tells you how to do this random generation at runtime but what it doesn't tell you is how to link this in to the top-down engine level manager so here's the code you need super simple look for the checkpoint spawn object that has been spawned in by dungeon architect that's where we're going to start the level and then make that the initial spawn point for the level manager and that's it your character will appear in the right place of any generated dungeon so now that we have a randomly generated dungeon, we need a central home in order to enter these random dungeons. And that's what this is. It's a home level. It just has a simple little portal in it at the moment. And on this portal, I have some components that come with top-down engine. First of all, we need a sphere collider, and then we have the go-to level entry point. And if I scroll all the way down, everything's default in here at the moment. But down here is the level name that we want to go to. That is the name of the level where we're generating our dungeon. So as we move into that area, we open up a loading screen. This obviously needs some work, but here is our randomly generated dungeon. Now, how do we get back again? Well, if I just pause the game here and do a search for portal, I'll find that my dungeon architect is spawning a portal in, and this works exactly the same way. You have a go-to level, scroll down, and you find that that one goes back to home. That's it. We can go backwards and forwards now. Awesomely good. The next major feature I'll implement is probably going to be the modding framework. 
So come back soon, we'll see how I get on.